going on YouTube? Um, didn't have a good night. Um, I was plagued with Kawhi's injury. Not that it would have helped me unless he really, really went off into the 80s or something. Westbrook did okay. He didn't quite hit value. LeBron did. I wish I had LeBron. I was discouraging people from LeBron. And if you played LeBron, you would have been happy. I'm not really disappointed in myself with this slate. It's, it's a slate that I only bet um, like $30. If you did the Lakers stack, I almost hit with my $50. And I always end up in the top 10 around here, I swear. Um, I almost hit with this Lakers stack lineup that I had. Um, it did well. Um, Russell did well, TJ Warren did well, Mark Gasol did well, Tobias Harris, Oladipo all hit value, but kind of got screwed with Eulis, and I was kind of banking on um, Bledsoe not playing, that way um, Eulis would have had a little more run, and this would have definitely been up, and this would have been a great lineup, but I'm not going to dwell on that, I'm just going to create this lineup. Um... To start it off, we're going to look at the Orlando-Charlotte games. We're going to look at injuries. There's a lot of injuries on the Charlotte side of the ball. Um, Batum seems to be, I think he's um, probable Probable when I check, though. Um, yeah. So I guess he had a minor um, ankle injury, but he's probable to play. He left the last game but came back, and he's doing okay. So Batum should play. Not concerned about Batum. On the Orlando side, Vucevic may come back. Even if he doesn't, um, I'll stay away from Biombo. His price has inflated. I said it in my last video, and he did nothing. I faded him, and we won that night, right? So Kemba Walker, we know, on any given night, can give you in the 40s. He's been doing it consistently. Um, Orlando is not a team that can shut down point guards. He's still at home. He's on a little home. I know he was in Miami. So on the road, he does good at home. He does well. I think it continues, especially with Batum kind of banged up. Um, Alfred Payton, I mean, he's not the best of defenders, but it's worth a mention. I'll pull Kemba Walker over into my queue. Um, Alfred Payton, oh, hold on. We're doing Charlotte, right? Point guards. Um, Briante Weber. Is worth a look. I wouldn't play him tomorrow. Um, he's on a 10 day contract. Um, they do need a backup for Kemba Walker, which means I like Kemba Walker even more because he's going to play minutes in the high 30s because there's no one to back him up. I don't think they're going to run a scrub really against Orlando, who should give them a good run. Um, Jeremy Lamb is always in play. I played him another night. He screwed me. I'm not really going to risk it. It's too good of a slate to um, risk that. Bellinelli. Yeah. Batum, if he does play um, in 29 minutes, two games this season so far, he's put up 42 fantasy points. He's down into the 6,000s, and when he does play, we know that his floor can be into the 20s a little bit, but for the most part, he's in the 30s. In 40s, so I'll hold on to him for now until we find someone better. I like Batum, like Walker. Um, Kid Gilchrist, inconsistent. He can go from 30 to 20. You don't want to mess around with that tomorrow. In two games, he's about 27, averaging 25 minutes. So um, the upside is not there to risk it. You know, when you risk playing players, that's risky. It's because of upside. So my advice is don't risk a player unless the upside is great. You're just setting yourself up hoping he hits value. But if he does, he just did that. He didn't give you more. He just barely hit value. You want to risk a player that you he can hit big and separate you from others. So Kid Girls Chris is not doing that for you. Marvin Williams potentially can. The only thing is um, if... Vucevic starts, I like Marvin Williams. If Biombo starts, I don't like Marvin Williams. I know it's weird, but that's just it. I'm not going to put him in my queue. I don't think I'll play him tomorrow anyway. Kaminsky and O'Brien is out. So Christian Wood becomes interesting. Um, they, don't, they didn't run him, but when they... 
In 23 minutes on the 26th of February, he only gave me 12.5 fantasy points. Orlando can be generous to big big men, but it's just darts. I'm not throwing that dart. Zella is a good consideration. Again, he doesn't have crazy upside. He's not going to get you into the 40s and 50s. He can get you into the low 20s for 5K on a decent slate. I'll stay away from Zella tomorrow, um, even though the matchup is there, and it's a good matchup. Um, and if Vucevic starts tomorrow, I would recommend that you play him. Charlotte's really banged up. Cody Zeller is not really playing defense to stop Vucevic. Um, his price is just about 7K, and he consistently will get you into the 40s. So if Vucevic plays, he's someone that I would strongly consider tomorrow. Um, on the Golden State-Minnesota game, um, there's no injury. Oh, Kevin Durant, we know, is out. Brandon Rush is probable, I think I read. Um, he took part in practice, and um, he probably will play. That doesn't matter. I'm not going to play him anyway. Ricky Rubio, still under 7K, is always in play. I don't care who it is. Golden State, not Golden State. Um, I think it's one of those nights, though, where he gets you back into the 30s. I don't think he'll be into the 40s. It's just the, the way that Golden State plays. He's not going to get you a lot of rebounds. Um, the one game that he, the two games, so he has two games against Golden State in which he played 30 minutes average, and he's averaging 21 points. It's averaging three and a half rebounds in those games. Between um Zaza, Draymond Green, um, even the back of JaVel McGee, they really limit um second chance points. Um and even on and the and I and I see the um Warriors pulling out a lot of offensive rebound. You know I'm a stats person. Let's see if I'm right off the top. Let's go to NBA.com. And let's check out Warriors on the offensive defense, where they rank in the NBA. I'm pretty sure they're going to be ranked pretty high because the way they, they're high energy. I just don't see Rubio doing well in that, that, that game tomorrow, teams. Let's see all offensive rebounds. Rebound, offensive rebounds. So... Um, Actually, no, they're at the bottom half. But I'll stay away from Rubio tomorrow. Um, the matchup is not golden. I just don't have confidence in it. Um, and his backup, same could be said. Um, shooting guard Shabazz Muhammad, 3,600. He put up 25 his last game against the Clippers. The game before that, he put up 6. The game before that, he put up 22. So he can go from 22 to 6. He doesn't have upside that's worth risking him. Stay away from him, all right? Uh, Wiggins, he's at home in a fast-paced matchup. Um, small forward. Um, so it says in two games he's averaged 40 minutes and he only put up 30 points. The only thing is in those games, Kevin Durant is who he had to deal with. And... You know, Kevin Durant turns the Warriors into a matchup monster because although they play him the three and the four sometimes, he can he can handle the ball. He can play a point forward. He can defend in most positions. Um, he's a good defender. He's going to make the all-defensive team. And um, so Wiggins struggle. But without Kevin Durant, he becomes interesting, right? I feel that um, he'll have... What's that rookie name? It's a weird name. Um, Patrick McCall on him. Or Matt Barnes. And in a high-paced game where I'm going to go back and forth, let me see if, what team plays similar to he. So Houston, he did okay, 39. Um, Denver, he put up 52. New Orleans, 42. I like Wiggins tomorrow. I can't count Wiggins out. Um, he's been struggling. It's been more... They've been playing more with the um, Carl Anthony Towns approach. Um, and 
Carl Anthony Towns has been taking a lot of shots. 21 shots. Wiggins took how many shots against the Clippers? 17 shots. The games where he put up these big numbers into the 40s and 50s, he has to take 26, 29, 21 shots. Um, in the last few games, he hasn't been taking that many shots. And um, they've been winning without him taking that many shots, except for the Spurs, which he took that many shots. So I see a trend. When he takes 17 shots, 16 and 22, and let Carl Anthony Towns kind of do his thing, they win. When he takes more shots, they lose. So uh, I'm going to stay away from him. I'm going to X him out. Um, there's other players that I like on the slate. Carl Anthony Towns, I did consider a lot. Um, he needs about 60 to hit value, a little over 60. You know that he can do it. It's just that Golden State, again, um, they tend to... Um, so to hit 60, right, he has to score. He has to get some blocks. Golden State shoots a lot of threes. They're not in the interior. Um, so his block numbers wouldn't be there in the two games against Golden State. He's averaging half a block a game. So he's not blocking and Golden State doesn't really provide a lot of opportunities for blocks for him. Um, when else did he hit near the 60? This game he had to get 20 rebounds. I don't see him doing that. Like I said, Golden State's pretty good on the boards from what I see. I just see him in the 50s, maybe down in the 40s if things doesn't go too well. The Warriors are pissed off, man. They're not playing well. I think tomorrow is a Draymond Green game where he says, listen, guys, you haven't been doing well. Let me get some burn. Let me kind of run the point forward. I think Draymond Green has an opportunity to triple-double tomorrow. I'm not going to put my money on it, but I'm just not going to bet on Towns for that purpose. Um, On the Golden State side of the ball, um, the last game, Steph Curry had a better matchup against Boston. I thought he was going to go off coming back home. Uh, he didn't. In two games against Minnesota, he's put up about 50 fantasy points. He needs 60 to hit value. He is in a slump right now. Now, a lot of betters like to pick him because they figured, oh, he can't be in it forever. He's going to break out. I need to see consistency. That's how I play with my money, with consistency. I'm not going to go all in on a slate like this on Steph Curry, knowing that he's in a slump. He's shooting bad. Um, his shot's not falling right now. Two for nine from threes, five for 13, two for 11. And when he did shoot about 40%, six for 15, he only put up 44 fantasy points. His assist numbers are there. Um, his scoring is there. His rebound is there. And he's playing like an average NBA, a good NBA player right now. And uh, he's not on that elite, elite level like he was last year. And for 10K, I think he's a little too expensive. I'm going to stay away from it. Clay Thompson did well against them. In two games, he put up 41 points. He needs his shots to be falling, and um, I'm not going to risk it. For 7K, I could get more of a guarantee floor for tomorrow's slate. So because Clay floor can be a little low sometime for that price, I'm going to stay away from him. Andre Iguodala, um, similar story, man. He His last game was 18. The one before that was 46, and that summarizes the risk that it takes to play him, and I'm not going to do it. Patrick McCall, it's not worth it. Um, Draymond Green is my favorite player on the Warriors. Um, in 34 minutes in the one game he played, he put up 35 points. We know that bigs, good bigs, athletic fours and fives against Minnesota will feast, okay? They will feast. I see Draymond getting some blocks tomorrow, um, some assists tomorrow. I think his assist numbers are up. He's home. I love Draymond tomorrow, man. I'm going to put him in the queue and hold on to him for now. Um, Zaza is always a play. It's just that he doesn't get consistent enough minutes. They're playing him in the teens, and they're splitting with him and David West, which is worth some consideration. David West is getting teens as well. I'm not going to play any of those guys. I'm going to get off of this game. Next game, Houston versus Chicago. Let's um, look at the injuries. Ryan Anderson is questionable. Dwayne Wade is questionable. Let's read up on those guys really quick. Wade's story is 
he went through some practice on Thursday, and um, the coach said that he expect Wade to be back in the lineup for Friday's game. That's interesting. For a sub 7K Dwayne Wade, if he plays, I want him. All right. Same thing for Butler. Now, I wouldn't play Butler if um, Wade is out, but with Wade in, I like Butler more. And I know it's weird, but I like Butler with Wade in. I like Wade with Butler in. Um, Wade is in a good spot, man. If he plays, um, what was his injury? A thigh, whatever. He's just old and need rest. Has a family that's getting his sons are approaching teenage years, so he's asking for days off. I'm not even sure if I see him at the games. Um, but he's 68k, which means he needs about 40. In the one game that they played, he put up um, 38 points. The reason I like Wade a lot tomorrow is because. Um, he is a guard that will get a lot of rebounds. He kind of crashes the boards. If you look at his rebound averages, most games he's between 4 and 10, 9 rebounds. He's a triple-double threat on any given night. In a high-paced matchup at home, well-rested, I think Dwayne Wade can succeed tomorrow. I'm going to put him in our queue. Um, small forward. Jimmy Butler is in play. I think he'll get you into the 40s. Tomorrow, I just don't see him into the 50s. He needs, like, upper 50s to hit value. He's way too expensive. Jimmy Butler's not a 10K, 9K, 9.5K player. I'm not playing him for that price. Um, I don't know why. I, I, you know, spent some time a couple of days ago looking into Jimmy Butler, and I heard a story that he was homeless, and the uh, family took him in, and he succeeded against adversity and whatnot. I looked at his rookie year, and um, he's good. He's an all-star. He plays well, but I don't think he's elite. I wouldn't put Jimmy Butler in, like, trade deadline. They're like, oh, my God, the Bulls going to do. I don't think he warrants that much attention, to be honest. All right, I'm going to take out Batoon and put Wade in Batoon's spot just to keep the lineup safe because I don't want to waste too much time tonight. I just want to get through this. Um so that's my spiel. Jimmy Butler, I don't play him. I never play Jimmy Butler unless he's like 60-something K. Maybe seven, low 7 K thousand if the matchup is right. But 8 and up, I'm not messing around with Jimmy Butler. Personal preference. Bobby Portis can get you 12, 17, 19, or 37. I don't want him. He's too risky. And the upside is there, yes, but I just he's just not a good player. Who's Bobby Portis? He's in the second year. He hasn't proven himself to me to warrant putting my cash US dollar on him. I'm not doing it. Robin Lopez, I like a lot, man. I think the matchup is there for him, especially with um Wade back and um the ball being moving around. I don't know if you guys know, but when Wade is on the court, the ball moves around more than anything else. Um I think a lot of rebounds will be there for Rob Lowe tomorrow. I'm gonna hold on to him. I have Strong considerations. As a matter of fact, I made a YouTube video with um, my lineup that's still updating. And I had Rob Lowe in that lineup. I might end up with a different lineup here. And uh, that's just going to give you guys two good lineups to look at. I find that when I verbalize things, I speak things that I don't see when I'm quiet trying to pick a lineup. And this is why I like doing this as well. It helps me make lineups. I'm verbalizing out loud how I'm feeling. Um, very therapeutic. <laughs> My girlfriend hates it because she thinks I spend too much time on the computer. And um, yeah. So um, Rob Lowe's in play. Laverne sucks. He showed that in OKC. In Orlando, he got 29 minutes. And this is so fake. He got four assists. No Dwayne Wade, so anything can happen. The team's just playing like the deaf lead in the blind. Um, I think Dwayne Wade is the key to this team, man. Not Jimmy, but let me not rant on Jimmy anymore. On the Houston side of the ball, Pat Beverly is in a good place. Who starts for point guard. Jerry and Grant does play a little bit of defense, but I don't think enough for Pat Beverly. This guy runs around like a headless chicken. He's getting you steals, assists, rebounds. He's doing it all. Um, Utah, 
kind of struggle with his shot. I don't think that happens again tomorrow. Um, for six-time value, he just needs 30. Thing with him, oh, he does. He has some 40 upside, and he consistently gets you around 30. And he's dual position. He can play point guard or shooting guard. So I like him. I'm going to hold on to him for a little bit and see what becomes of it. But Pat Bev is definitely in play for tomorrow as well. James Harden is one of my favorite plays for tomorrow. I'm going to pull him over. On any given night, you got to consider James Harden. Um, he's going to have Dwayne Wade on him. Dwayne Wade, I don't think, could give him too much resistance. Um, to fit James Harden in, I'm wondering if I don't want to take Kemba out. So Kemba needs about mid 40s to make me happy. He's done that in one, two, three, f- one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of the last ten games. So I'm not touching Kemba. Um, and Batum is a little bit shaky. They're missing big men. They have injury problems. Kemba's in a good spot. I'm gonna hold on to him. Dwayne Wade, I like. I'm not gonna take him out. Draymond Green. Um, yeah. I need 48 from him. He's done that twice in the last 10 games. And he doesn't have too much upside above that. Right? Um, even does Kemba, really. Kemba doesn't really have upside into the 50s, right? Oh, yeah, he does. He did it once. At home, he's a better player. I'm going to leave him. He's just safe. I feel like his floor will be even more safe than just his ceiling. Draymond Green has a very low floor. Um, let's check it out. Um, hmm, 20s but Durant out his floor is ready Draymond Green is intriguing I don't know I might have to um reconsider Harden for that price tomorrow oh man this is tough I, I don't like to not play him because if he goes off for 80 and he's due for a triple double um I'll be upset but um I have another lineup that's on YouTube with Harden in it you can check it out but to keep it balanced and to have something more safe, like more of like a quote-unquote cash lineup, I'm going to leave James Harden out of this one. And I think that's fair. Eric Gordon, Gordon Price was like 4300 and he hit value to that, so barely. Uh, for 5 k I'm going to leave him alone. Um, just risky. The one game that he played them, he put up 33 minutes, and he gave 31 points. So he can be a point per minute. But he comes off the bench. And Lou Williams is on the team. So he's competing for minutes. That makes it extra risky. I'm going to stay away. Trevor Ariza is cheap, man. We know this guy can get you into the 30s and 40s. Problem is he hasn't done it in the last 10 games. So I'm not going to risk it. Um, Sam Decker is a waste of time in my opinion. I'm not going to even get into that. Um, Capella is a good play tomorrow. In 31 minutes, he gave you 26 points last time against um, Chicago. Tomorrow, he is playing. Um, in that game, he only played. Well, he played 30 minutes. He's been playing 30s and upper 20s. He's been in like 38, 42. But then he could be 24, 29. Um, I'm not sure I love that lineup tomorrow. I'm not sure I love it. I'm going to stay away from it. Nene. Is always worth consideration because he's always solid for at least 20. But his price is on the upper side of 3K, which means I need about 20. Let's see, 18 plus 4, 22. And he has given me that in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five out of the last 10 games. So it's a 50 50 shot, but again, his upside is not there. He's not going to give me 30s and 40s, and I'm just not going to risk it. I'm trying to do a balanced lineup here. And that's that game. Moving on to the next game, Indiana versus Milwaukee. Injury, Michael Beasley is out. Love Tony Snow with Michael Beasley out. Love Snow with Beasley out. He's getting a good run. For some reason, with Beasley out and the other guy that just had surgery, um, Parker, I kind of spent a lot of time looking at this team because Snell is not a person I like to put my money on. I had to really like sit and convince myself. And what I looked at was um, the team in general. Right? So I looked at who's going to play each position. They don't really run Antetokounmpo at the point like they were before. He's more at the small forward now. Power forward, I even see. But um, I don't see him running the ball like they were doing in the beginning of the season. And for that reason, they have him here as dual point guard, small forward. 
It's been more like Brogdon and Della Dover. So I can call them two holding on the point guard, right? Then the shooting guard, I would say it's been Snell, and that's it. Rashawn Vaughn, maybe. Um, but he's getting like four minutes, so it's not him. And we know Della Vadova and um, Brogdon kind of split minutes, twenty mid twenties a piece for them. So they're doing the point shooting guard. They ha- I don't see anyone. I guess um, Brogdon, Della Vadova, and Tony Snell kind of all three mix it in. But then Tony Snell can also play the three position, which Chris Middleton. They start, and Tadakumpo plays some of that. So we go to the power forward, and then there's nobody again. They just signed Terrence Jones. Um, so maybe that's what it is. Maybe Terrence Jones, and then who else? So Terrence Jones, and um, so if Terrence Jones plays, probably take away some minutes from Snell, huh? Because Snell's been playing in the 30s for minutes consistently, man. And if a guy's going to be on the court for 30 minutes who plays good. He doesn't even need to score to give me fantasy points. But I'm, I'm going to stay away from Snell because I see that um, Terrence Jones got a good practice in and he might play, and I'm just concerned that he may take minutes away. And then a bunch of centers that need minutes, Greg Monroe, Henson, Haas, Don Maker, all four of those guys in the rotation. So I'm going to stay away from Snell. He's had a run. The scouting report's already out. Be careful. He's good. He's a little risky. I'm just going to chill. On the Indiana side of the ball, Jeff Teague been struggling, man. I'm not playing him until he shows some consistency. We know the upside is there, but similar to Steph Curry, until he shows me that he's back, I'm going to leave him alone. Aaron Brooks and Stucky. Stucky, for the minimal, is interesting. Um, He can get you 19 or he can get you .75. I'm not with that. No, no Stucky. Monte Ellis, I like. Um, 3,700, he needs about 22. He gets you 17, 18, 12 in the last three. I'm going to leave him alone. The person that I'm going to put instead of Snell in my small forward is C.J. Miles. In two games, he's averaged 28 minutes against this team. Now, of course, that's with no um, Middleton. I guess Middleton plays a little bit of defense, but I'm still willing to risk it. He's dual position. He's playing minutes in the 30s. And the Detroit game was a blowout, so he didn't. But games that's close, he's in the 30s. And um, he's av- he's like... 21 is his floor, which is over five times value. He got ceiling into the 30s, which would be eight times value. I think he said allows more the six, seven times value tomorrow. I like the spot that he's in. He saved me some money. Even if he doesn't do too well, I don't think with the rest of my lineup looking the way it is, I don't think it kills me tomorrow. Um, Paul George, he's been hot. The matchup looks okay. Um, I think he draws the attention of the best defender, of course. Um. In the last three, 35, 57, 48. Um, the last two against Milwaukee, average 37 minutes. And he only put up 31. I want to say until he showed me some consistency, I'm going to leave him alone. But he has been showing me consistency. I just need 48 to hit value with him. Um, I would love a 57, but I think that was fake. It was the ones, let's see what he put. He scored 36 points and then 34 points in the two games that he did well. Milwaukee plays defense, man. I see teams struggle against them. I'm going to stay away from Paul George. Milwaukee is just a good team, and um, they can be tough. My gut just doesn't feel it. They have them as the best lineup, but we know that their lineup is doing a lot of transitioning, and um, that can be fake as well. Um, Thad Young had a good game last time out. He put up 30 points. Before he got injured, he's been putting upper 20s, 30s consistently. Um... He just has to show some more consistency again. I think his injury is behind him and he's back, but I'm not willing to risk it. Uh, Lavoy Allen, no. Miles Turner is worth the consideration. Um, he needs mid 30s. He's been in the 20s too much for me to consider. Al Jefferson for the bare minimal always comes off the bench and give you five to six times value. Um, again, Charlotte, he gave me one point, but I think. He only played seven minutes, and that game got out of hand. But in a close game, he gets mid-teens, and he gives you 17, 16, 15, 19. It's a good play. The only thing, the upside is not there. When I can make a balanced lineup tomorrow, I'm just not going to consider Al Jefferson. But if you have, like, a lineup with a bunch of studs and you're confident about it, you just need a min player, and I think 
Al Jefferson is a safe floor mid player that'll get you five to six times value on any given night. And that's that game. Going on to the Toronto versus Atlanta game. Um, everyone's healthiest. Damari Carroll is not. And I'll start with Atlanta so I can take a look at him with Toronto. It's saying that he has some ankle issues. Uh, we know ankle stuff keep you out about a week. He played on the fourth. So if he twists his ankle, and that's why he's out, I would count him being out again. Love Damari Carroll tomorrow, man. We know that I should not be saying that because he screwed me over already this year. But I think against Atlanta, it's a good spot for him. And he's struggling the last two games. I made another um lineup, and I played him. I kind of that's like a gambling tournament kind of lineup. This is a safe cash game lineup, and I'm gonna leave the Rosen out of it. Love Corey Joseph, but just not guarantee. He needs 30 to hit value, and his upside is not gonna push him into the 40s. So I'm not gonna go crazy on Corey Joseph. Norman Powell, nope. Ibaka. Against Millsap, I won't go crazy. In three games, he's averaged 30 minutes against Millsap. He put up 25 fantasy points for $6,000. That's not what I want tomorrow. Patterson, if he gets to start, I'm still not playing him. At min price, he got to start the last time. put up 24 minutes and 10 fantasy points. You are in the doghouse with that type of production. Valentunas for 4800 is worth consideration. Um, just not going to do it. I see his minutes getting slim. He's been fighting for minutes lately in New Orleans. They kind of need him in New Orleans with two big, big men. But I don't think Atlanta, I'm just not. It's the matchup's not there. The upside's not there. The consistency's not there. I don't like him. On the Atlanta side of the ball, Shooter, if um, Kyle Lowry was playing, I would have played Shooter. But it seems like this... Um, Corey Joseph guy is a little defensive, a little bit, right? Um, I don't see a lot of point guards taking advantage of him. Drew Holiday kind of had a tough time out against him. I'm going to stay away from Shooter. Shooter might be on hot water, man. That defensive effort was just not there. The last game out, he put up 45, but it's the Nets. That was to be expected. So his price went up a little bit. This matchup is not the worst. He needs about 40 to hit value, but I'm not expecting 40 back-to-back nights from Shooter in a matchup that's not optimal. And the last 10 before that 40 was all 30s, all 30s. And I don't want 30s from him tomorrow. Um, Shooting guard, Tim Hardaway Jr. is always in play. Um, Just don't love him tomorrow. The matchup, Toronto. Um, Let me see something. Let me click on a Toronto player and see something. Since... um, Lowry went out. They've been playing decent defense. You know, um, they're holding teams to like 90s, low 100s. Um, I just don't know, man. I don't I don't like anybody from this game tomorrow. It's a, Atlanta is always a game to look for value. I do. I do like DeRozan. I love Corey. I love the guards. I love the guards versus Atlanta. In the tournament settings, I feel like there's a lot of upside if you pair DeRozan and Corey Joseph, and I did that on the other lineup that I have on YouTube, but in a safe cash lineup, it's not something that I'm excited to attack, all right, so I'll be careful, um, Tim Hardaway Jr., yep, matchup's not there, and um, <coughs> I just don't like that matchup for him tomorrow, Shuffleosa is pretty safe, for 4,200, I think five-time value is pretty safe, but he can get you into the six. And sometimes into the 30s, I'm not going to mess with them. I think for two positions, I have um, about six grand in cash and Sheffalosius. I just want to make it even. But he is worth a consideration if probably my favorite play person on um, Atlanta. Bazemore is not consistent enough. He can have it. So it's Cephalosha, Bazemore, Tim Hardaway Jr. One of those guys might have a good night. We just don't know which one. I'm not going to roll the dice. Millsap against Ibaka is a little tough. I'm going to stay away from that. Ilya Sova, similar to... Um, Ilya Sova is pretty safe, man. For 4K, I think he'll get you low 20s, 5 to 6 times value. 
um, safe. He just comes off the bench, and when I have 6K per play, I'm not going to put him on the side, but I like Ilyasov. I think he's worth consideration. He's at home. We know that he can rebound. He can shoot. He can play very good defense. He'll get you some steals. DeRozan can be a little bit erratic with the ball, so he'll take a couple away from him. In the three games that he played Toronto this year, he's averaging 23 minutes, 24 points fantasy-wise, which is about six times value. So, Ayo Silva is not someone to be afraid of tomorrow. Dwight Howard. Um, for 7K, he needs about 42. Worth consideration, I would say. Um, they just don't play him enough minutes. And Valanchunas and Ibaka down there, I think, can do a decent job on him. I'm going to stay away from him. Um, but if I was to make five lineups, I would have... Dwight Howard in one, but I, I only played two max. I'm not here to waste money. One lineup I really feel good about, and then a safe one that might bring back some money for me, and that's a good strategy when you're playing fantasy sports. And that's that game. Brooklyn-Dallas game, we know that um, Brook Lopez is out. In a tournament lineup where I'm going stars and scrubs, I will play Quincy AC. There's also a bias because I live in New York and I watch Nets game. And I know he's a hustler. And with the opportunity, he's going to maximize. And um, let's check out the other injuries. Um, Joe Harris is also out. So the Nets are short, right? For that reason, I'm going to start with them. I like Jeremy Lin a lot. The matchup is the worst in the NBA, but they're going to look to him for production tomorrow. I love Jeremy Lin. I'm not going to put him in this lineup just because of the matchup. And I'm trying to be safe with this lineup that I'm building. But... Jeremy Lin is worth consideration. I have him in the um, other lineup. That's risky tournament upside. Sean Kilpatrick's been killing it. All right, he's been killing it. Thirty-six and thirty-six and thirty-three in the last three games, which is six times value. With Brook Lopez taking eighteen to twenty shots a game, someone else is going to need to take those shots. The only thing is Dallas slows the ball down a little bit. Um, I don't plan on blowout, but this one is a high risk blowout game with no Brook Lopez. Um, I think he can hit value. I would say 75, 25 that he hits value. Just not going to risk it. Uh, he's not someone I'm willing to risk and not a perfect matchup. Small forward. Um, Karis Levert. All these guys, same story. You can take that story for all these guys. Levert's okay. Quincy AC is the best value player of the night that I've seen so far without all the injury news. But what we know so far, like Quincy AC for value. Trevor Booker might get the start, although I know they love to bring him off the bench. He's a hustling kind of guy. I think he can hit you with a safe six times value tomorrow. Um, Same story for all of these guys, all right? Um, on the Dallas side of the ball, love New Orleans Noel. The reason I love New Orleans Noel because if it's a blowout, he'll get more points, he'll get more minutes. But they're going to try to run him into the schemes and the different lineups and get him more acclimated, more practice against opponents versus just your own self on the practice court. So I think that they're going to use the Nets as like practice dummies tomorrow and Noel is going to benefit off of that. Um, 5,700. I'm tempted to take out Robin Lopez and put Noel in. Robin Lopez is not consistent. In the one game, he put up an overtime game, 40 minutes, and only pulled down 27 fantasy points. Um, Dwayne Wade seems to be back, so him taking 17 and 14 shots may be reduced. I'm going to back off of Robin Lopez and throw some Noel. I think Noel is safe tomorrow, man. I love Noel tomorrow, okay? Um... Guard, what am I doing? Point guard, Yogi Ferrell is always a good play. The Nets give up a lot of points to point guards. He might be chalked tomorrow, which I don't see why, because they're saying that J.J. Barea is back, even though J.J. Barea is going to be on a limit restriction. It's going to cut into his minutes. And I see J.J. Barea starting over Yogi Ferrell once he's fully healthy and back into shape. So I will stay away from Yogi just because Berea may be back and I will stay away from Berea because he's going to be on a minute restriction. I will stay away from Harris because of those two reasons. Seth Curry is worth consideration. Um, he seems to be leading the team in shots. Um, his confidence is way high. I'm not going to pull him over because this game just seems weird tomorrow, man. I don't know what to expect from it. 
And when I don't know what to expect, I stay away. The only reason I like Noel is because I feel like no matter what happens in this game tomorrow, Noel's in a good spot. Wesley Matthews, same could be said. Just don't know what to expect. Dirk, same thing. All these guys can go off. Any one of them can have a good game. All of them can have a good game. I just don't know. I don't. I, I like to be able to predict. I like games with a little bit of predictability. This one doesn't have it for me. I'm going to stay away. Um, but Dirk is... He already made the milestone. Um, he's saying that he might want to play two more seasons. I think he might be chasing another 1,000 points. Um, in the last two games, he put up 40 fantasy points. That'll get you seven times value if he gets back into the 40s tomorrow. Uh, and I don't see anyone that can keep up with him. Who's going to hold him? There's no one that can. The only thing, if Dirk Nowitzki has a bad game tomorrow, I think... Um, it's going to be Dallas restricting Dirk Nowitzki and not the Nets doing something. But um, I'm gonna, I'll pull him over in a forward spot for now. I might uh, Most likely I'll replace him. I already got someone in mind that I might replace him with. But um, like Dirk Nowitzki tomorrow and like him enough to pull him over and carry him on to the next game. And that's it for that game. Um, the, Dallas, the Boston Denver game, let's check for injuries. Kenneth Farid is still out. Galinari and Jokic, I think they're sharing the same bug. They're still out. Um, because Kenneth Farid is still out, I want to show you guys something. Um, I'm going to start on the Denver side of the ball. Um, power forwards, Wilson Chandler, they have him in the red as a bad matchup tomorrow. And I'm hoping that steers a lot of people away because um, it's kind of fake. He's not a small forward. Small forward is going to take um, attract the de defensive efforts of, um, what's this guy's name? Um, Jay Crowder and Jay Crowder is a good defender so um, whoever smarts at, starts at small forward tomorrow it could be Barton um, so they're doing what Jameer Nelson and they, they might go small lineup where Wilson Chandler does start at the small forward and who started the last game let's see who got the most minutes the last couple games and so, Darrell Arthur got 28 minutes against um, Washington in 17 minutes. Prior to that, um, Mason Plumley, and, and But they wouldn't start Plumley. I know they said they want to play Plumley and um, Jokic on the court together, but I think they're realizing that's not a good idea. Plumlee needs 36 to hit value tomorrow. If you started, I would definitely play Plumlee against a Boston team that we know we want to attack from a center point of view. But he is not guaranteed to start. And that's why I'm going to do a lineup and a live tomorrow so that I can have live advice for you guys as the injury reports are coming out. And I'm playing around with my lineups and I'm, I'm online in the chat rooms. and We're going to have a good time tomorrow, all right? So, um... Plumlee, I'll stay away from for now. Chandler, initially, I like, but I don't know who's... Either way, I'm going to put Chandler over. Um, take Dirk out and put Chandler. Now, I consider what he did the other day as struggling. Um, he only gave me, like, mid-30s, which was five-time value, so he didn't kill me. We did cash that night. But he has upside. I can get into the 40s and 50s, and on a bad... In a very good matchup against um, Boston at home, rested, practiced at home, and just feeling confident. I think Russell Chandler is in a good spot tomorrow. Jameer Nelson has a good... Oh, it, you guys may think that target point guards against Boston, right? True, yes. But not with a, with um, A.V. Bradley back. Even though A.V. Bradley doesn't guard the point guard, he, I, I watched that... Um, Golden State game, he controls that whole um, backcourt. He's locking it down, all right? And then they have Crowder that kind of helps out in between. It's just guards against Boston is a fake positive right now. I would be very careful, especially a Jameer Nelson kind of guard. I'm not doing it. Gary Harris is always worth consideration. He's steadily around 30, give or take. He'll go over or under. We need about mid-30s, and that's kind of his ceiling. I don't want to bet on 
him hitting his ceiling tomorrow. I want to do something that's more comfortable for a player. Will Barton is coming off the bench, and he could be volatile. It might be his day. It might not be. I don't want to mess with it. Hernan Gomez had a decent game. Do not chase that. And uh, Mason Plumley. if Jokic is out. If Jokic plays, is he a must play tomorrow? Um, For 10K Jokic, I don't like it, man. Sometimes I play Jokic, he gives me 30 points, 20 points, and he plays good minutes. Like, he plays 33 minutes against Memphis, gave me 37 points. Um, I just don't like to play Jokic. It's a good matchup for him, but... Most nights when he plays, he will do well. But it's just the night when he don't that give you give me that feeling like, oh man, seriously, I could have won money and Jokic messed it up for me. I, I I don't like to roster him, but he's a good play. I will roster him in certain predicaments. Just that, just not the way that he's coming off of some illness. I don't know if he's gonna be a hundred percent. It's just so much going wrong for him that I don't want to mess around. And the last game, Washington versus Sacramento. Um. Did I do Boston? No. So let's cover Boston. Isaiah Thomas is always a good play. The only thing is he's 8.7K, which means he needs 50s when it comes to fantasy points. And 32 minutes in Denver, he put up 40. He only put up 50 once. Um, that was against Phoenix. Phoenix and Denver play similar style basketball, so I'm, I'm not ruling it out. It's just that... Um, too many times he just settles into the 40s and 30s, and I don't want to risk it. Yesterday against Golden State, he did in the 30s. He did have two good games against the Clippers and Phoenix. The next thing about Celtics players that I'll be careful of, this is their fifth straight away game. So they went from L.A. to Phoenix, back to L.A., um, down into the Bay Area. Now they're going into Denver. They've been traveling a lot. Um, hasn't Haven't been able to be in the comfort of their own practice facilities at home. I think the fifth game is going to be tough. Um, fifth away game since the third. Tomorrow's the tenth. So in seven days, they playing five games on the road. Be careful, please. All right. Um, same could be said for Avery Bradley, Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown. It's just crowded, crowder. It's a crowded team with players that get a lot of minutes. Denver is the lineup though. It's a high paced game. Um, it's like playing the Lakers. You just want to roster or stack on it, but. To be playing seven games in about five games in seven days, all on the road, traveling up and down on the West Coast. I'm, I'm just not going to play anyone. But if I, without the circumstances, and I want to give guys a shot, uh, I will stay away from Avery Bradley because he's more defensively minded. And um, Gary Harris does play some decent defense sometimes. So, Jay Crowder. Um... It's a good cash play. His floor is pretty much mid twenties. He can get you into the thirties consistently. Um, Jalen Brown's been impressing his coach, but with the emergence of Avery Bradley coming back healthy, his minutes has been slowly declining. So he's risky. Power forward Kelly Olynyk just had a good game, but before that he was sixteen nine and ten. Sixteen nine and ten. I don't know which one I'm gonna get. I don't want to gamble. Al Horford. Against Denver. Ooh. Look what we have. We have a 5.6K Al Horford, guys. Against a Denver team tomorrow. A team. Now, we know that Al Horford is not a rebounder, right? To make value, he needs 33. His floor is steady in the 20s, right? So, five-time value, we can say we can expect from him. His upside, though, could be, uh, I think it's bait. I think it's a trap. But, hey, listen, in the cash lineup, if I had $5,600 left, I only have 5200 I would probably just throw out Horford and then play him. That's a good, safe play. Um, we know he's going to take a good amount of shots, um, 8 to 12 shots a game. He's not the best rebounder, but he can uh, he almost triple-double against Cleveland. So he looks to be dishing the ball, and we know that'd be easy. He gets a lot of um, assists. He plays like a point center. Weird. Um, I like him. Man. I like him tomorrow for that price. Al Horford could be 
a good tricky play tomorrow. Um, I wouldn't blame you for putting him in your lineup. 5.6K starter against Denver is very intriguing. Don't miss out on that. I just don't have the cap. I don't see anyone that I would switch him out for, maybe. Um, I don't love Pat Beverly tomorrow. I don't hate him. I think Pat Beverly have a good game. Uh, bounce back here. Yeah. It's not going to mess with it. Um, And that's it. That's it for Boston. On this last game, Washington versus Sacramento, they're both healthy. On the Washington side of the ball, John Wall is always in consideration. He put up 50 in 42 minutes the last time they played. His last four games have been 51, 61, 43, 60. So he's good for five to six time value. At this price, um, I'll take 55 from him, and I think he's good for it. Um, just another one, man. He just played back-to-back -back games. Went went from Phoenix to Denver, one day off. Had to fly into Sacramento. And um, I said the same thing for him against the Denver game, going on the road back-to-back. -back, and he put up 51 five times. Back. It's not great. You know, I'm trying to be balanced. I don't have the money for him, but... John Wall any given night is not a bad play. I think his floor is pretty safe in the um, 40s to 50s, the worst case scenario. But for 10K, if you have like value plays that you know have good upside and you just want a nice, solid play, John Wall is worth consideration. They just brought Jennings in. Jennings played 18 minutes the last game, so he's digging into John Wall a little bit. If they jump out to a good lead, they might let Jennings finish the game. It's just too much could go wrong. I don't really trust John Wall tomorrow. Bradley Beal is a good play any given night. The guy could shoot, man. He's taking 15 to 21 shots a game. Um, he'll get to the line five to seven times. He'll get you rebounds. He'll get you steals or two, some assists, good points in the 20s and 30s. There's no reason not to consider him. He's pretty safe. I mean, his upside is there. His floor is in the 30s. For his price, I, I like I like um, Bradley Bill. The matchup is there for him. I do I like Bradley Bill a lot. Um, Otto Porter is hit or miss. He did bounce back, hit six times value, but the two games before that, he was in the teens and 20s, and then the game before that, he's in the 40s. I don't know which Otto I'm going to get. I'm going to be careful. Um, Bogdanovich, same story. He just gave me 16 fantasy points, and they want 5K for him. That's three times value. You don't want to risk that. Markeith Morris has been struggling. He has to show me some consistency before I consider um, rostering him. Um, last time out, he um, last time out, he was 21 for 6K. That's a disappointment. The one before that, he's 11. I don't understand these prices. I guess it's because they start and the usage could be there, but if a guy put 21, 11, and 19 in the last three outings, and even 32 before that, why is he still 6K? I'm not paying that for him. He doesn't show me any promise. Um, Jason Smith, they kind of got him back into the rotation in Phoenix. They didn't play him in um, Denver. So unless he's in the rotation, which needs foul trouble of some sort, then I wouldn't really mess with him. Gort Hart just put up 32 fantasy points against Sacramento. It's the first time he has done that in a while. He, he used to be um, a solid for 30 any given night, but then he kind of went through a little struggle. And he pretty much needs a double-double with good amount of rebounds. Sacramento is kind of thin on the interior, but I must admit, when they got Costa Kufos and Corley Stein playing all right, it's been okay. They haven't been doing too bad. All right, On the Sacramento side of the ball, it's so unpredictable. I don't know who to recommend. I like Ty, Ty Lawson. Um, in one game, 24 minutes, he put up 20.5 fantasy points. Just came off of a bad matchup against San Antonio, but before that matchup, he scored 30 in about four consecutive games. He's going to get 30 minutes per game. Um, with all the guys being healthy, though, it's just too crowded. There's three. It's it's Ty Lawson and Collison. And 
Tyreek Evans, Gary Temple, Buddy Hill, um, Aflalo McLemore, Corley Stein, Labasier, Anthony Tolliver. It's just a lot of players on this team, and they don't have a go-to guy yet. I guess they're trying to make um, Tyreek Evans that kind of a go-to guy. Um, if anything, he's my favorite player on the team. And um, his floor is like five times value. His ceiling is eight times value. Um, he's been pretty consistent. They're at home. He's healthy. They go to him quite a bit. The matchup seems to be there. Tyreek Evans, I would say, is probably one of my favorite. Um, came tomorrow. And he's 5,200. That's just about what I have. I think I could round up this lineup with a Kyrie Irving, uh, a Tyreek Evans. Um, Shooting guard. Buddy here comes off the bench. He's not that great. The matchup's not there. Um, Bradley Beal seems to play decent defense, and that's why I'm kind of scared of Tyreek Evans as well. So does Otto Porter. Um, you attack Washington with bigs, power forwards, and centers. Corley Stein has potential to get you 30s. He would need 30 to hit six times value. I'm not really excited about that. LeBissier. He needs minutes, and he doesn't get it consistently. And um, Costa Kufos, I like a lot tomorrow. I think he's pretty safe, man. He has a good matchup. He's due. He's going to get you minutes in the 20s and 30s. He's good for a point per minute. Three straight games with double-digit rebounds. Three straight double-double games for him. Um, against Brooklyn, I don't know what happened, but that was the one game out. I like him. Like I'm going to put him in this lineup and upgrade somewhere else. I think I might upgrade um, CJ Miles. Maybe we can get somebody for a decent price if I put. The reason is, man, cost a cool folks for a sub 4K player that's starting against the Wizards who gives it up on the inside. I think he'll grab some boards, probably get some blocks. Um Some pick and roll. Ty Lawson does the pick and roll very well. That's one of his specialties. I like Costa Kufos, man. I think he's a good value tomorrow. And that's the slate. Um, I have thirteen hundred dollars left. Kemba Walker's safe. Wade is safe. I like CJ Miles. I think he's safe. Draymond is probably the one that's not as safe for ninety three hundred. Um, what am I looking at? I'm not going to play Draymond tomorrow. I'm going to take out Draymond. I'm going to put Wilson Chandler in the power forward slot. And then a good forward that I would say is reliable, safe floor, good upside that I like tomorrow will be... Paul George. He needs 48. Five time value is a little under 40. Uh, Paul George. Paul George. They say the matchup is good. He's he, His upside is there. I mean, he's on the road in one game. Paul George is someone I'm considering. In two games, he's averaged 37 minutes, 31 points. If I get 31 points, I'll be upset. It's about less than four times value. Um. Yeah, Paul George is not too much of a guarantee. Uh, Millsap against Toronto. Yeah, I think he'll struggle a little bit. Middleton is pretty safe, right? His floor is not too bad. Um, he has a good matchup. The floor is not the worst. The ceiling is there. He's the minutes to be there for him. I like Middleton. I'm going to go Middleton as a forward. Most of the channel, none of the Now, I got more money, huh? Right? Um, I want to keep Kufos though. I think Kufos uh, allow me to maximize up here a little bit. 10 9. Um, we can get some Antenna Kumpo in a good matchup. Um, he's hot. He His floor has been pretty much. No, I hate to, I hate playing Antenna Kumpo. I'll be nervous all night. Um, it was somebody that said I, I, would, I would consider that up here that said it was pretty safe. It's looking like we could probably even squeeze James Harden in it, even though, um, you know, let's see. To get James Harden, uh, we need to take someone out that's 20. 
So 27, right? Um, 10, 9, 8, let's see. 10, 9, 8, 8, 8, 9, I don't have anyone on my team that high anyway, so no. James Harden is out of the question. Carl Anthony Towns. Um, against Golden State. Um, that's not the worst. He's at home. We know at home he does better. Just I would need like mid fifties from him, man. I don't know if I can count on that tomorrow. Um, you know, maybe he's not. So how much would I need to? Let's see. So twenty seven. Thing with Carl Anthony Town, I think his floor is pretty safe. You know, if you have a bad night and give me fifties, that's five times value for a guy with this price. It's good and upside could be six times. He can definitely. Bring in all right. So in two games with Kevin Durant around, if Kevin Durant was playing tomorrow. He'll be a must play here. This is a position for him. I wonder what Durant did. Let's see in the two games. Just curious. Fifty in two games. And that's what I would expect, and that's why I like Draymond tomorrow. But um, I'm trying to see which one of these elite guys. Um, John Wall. And uh, I would caution because um, Sacramento has been playing pretty well since they traded Cousins. They've been cracking out on defense. They gave the Spurs a hard time. Um, Curry, no. Isaiah Thomas, although his ceiling is not great and I don't like him for six times, no, I'm not going to do Isaiah Thomas. The roles I like. My gut's telling me the roles in tomorrow, but... Not too safe. Bill, we established as a safe floor, so I'm all the way down. I think the best, safest thing to do at this point because what about Beverly? 78 for a Middleton is dual position? No. 78, what CJ Miles is. So 78 for all. Oh, let's see what's around 78. So Paul George or Pat Beverly, right? And my intuition on this is Paul George has a good upside, but his his floor could be what we expect from a Pat Beverly. Now, although Pat Beverly can get you into the 40s, so can Paul George. But Paul George is not going to get you 18 at like Pat Beverly or low 20s, right? We can almost bank on getting at least 30 from Paul George in the last 10 games. I mean, they had a little run around the all-star break when guys are sluggish. But outside of that, in the last one, let's see, in the last one, two, three, four, five games, he's been over 30. And it has a peak of 57. So um, for Paul George, hit value, I need about 47, 46, which is reasonable. So I, I can definitely take out Beverly. Let's stick Paul George in for that now. I'm not excited about Paul George tomorrow. I like him a lot. But for this lineup's sake, the way everything else is fitting, I'm going to take out um, Beverly and put Paul George in. So, And then CJ Miles. Boom. So this is a lineup that I made talking out loud. I made another one. This one is pretty safe, man. I love Custer Kufos. Um, to hit four times value at least. In the last 10 games, he's averaging four times value, and he doesn't have the worst matchup, all right? He has a good matchup. The minutes are there. He's starting. They don't really have that many bigs. They have to play him. I think he gets you rebounds, some blocks, some steals, um, and some points. Um, but that's definitely the weak point of my lineup, I would say, is Coastal Kufos and C.J. Miles. Everyone else is pretty safe, man. Kemba Walker's hot, Dwayne Wade. Sub 7K, I, I like it. I think Dwayne Wade to get me into the 40s, high 30s, and that's what value is. Paul George, Wilson Chandler against Boston is a good play. Nerlens Noel is going to beast tomorrow, man. That's my beast of the night. Love him. CJ Miles, hot. Um, His floor is decent. He's going to get the minutes. He can shoot. He'll get a couple threes. To have him and Paul George together, I think, is a good idea. Um, Chris Middleton, consistent, high floor. And then Costa Kufo is my sleeper of the night. Love this lineup. I'm going to submit it. This is going to be my safe lineup. 
and then with value opening up tomorrow, I might move around a couple guys, and um, that's it. That's what I got. All right, good luck. Um, hoping to do a live show tomorrow. I'm, I would say I'm 85% sure I'm going to do it. I'm not going to promise anything and not keep my promise. Uh, I do have some running around and commitments tomorrow, and I might be a little bit tired, but provided that, and I still got to learn how to do it. So I got to take some time and do the tutorials and realize how to do it. I don't want to put my face out there, but I can give you my voice in a chat box so you can ask questions. We can bounce opinions off of each other and uh, have the screen up, change around some lineup, play around with it. That's kind of where I'm going with it. So that's my intention for tomorrow. Um, good luck, guys. Um, oh, I wish you guys all the best. Um, let me know how you feel about this lineup that I just put together.